Hello, everyone, and welcome to a massive edition of AEW Dark. I am Excalibur, joined by the human suplex machine, Taz. And Taz, going back to the old days, just you and me out here. And this is the way it should be, okay? And I, by the way, very nice vest you have there. I wish <laughs> I had one, but I digress. You do realize Hobbs, Cage, Stalks, Team Taz in full effect, hook in their corner. Gonna be in action in this episode. And not to mention, Ricky Starks will be joining us here in the commentary position. But before we get to that, let's throw it down to Justin Roberts to kick things off on this massive edition of AEW Dark. This is a tag team bout set for a one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first from Bear Mountain, New York, at a combined weight of 604 pounds, Bear Boulder, Bear Bronson, Bear Country. That's Boulder on your left, Bronson on your right. This is our second look at Bear Country here, Taz, and they look impressive Absolute, against Stark Order. Absolutely, Excalibur. I, uh, I am a fan already of Bear Country, Boulder, and Bronson. Big, rugged, rugged, but yet athletic men. They really are. And their opponents being accompanied to the ring by Marco Stunt at a combined weight of 432 pounds, Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, Jurassic Express. Taz, you want to talk about big, rugged men? Look no further than Marco Stunt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, Marco, I think, is uh, Ricky Starks. Uh, you know, it's one of your favorite guys on the roster, I believe, right? I've never said that in my <laughs> life. <laughs> Good rib, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just starting, bro. But, uh, <laughs> no, but listen, I am a, uh, I'm a fan of both these teams here, guys. I really am. Jurassic Express and uh, also Bear Country. You know, it's a whole animalistic thing going on here, you know, because the bears are in the jungle. Mm -hmm. And we got dinosaurs there, Luchasaurus, the 65 What, what jungle do the bears live in? We live in the, the Asparaxis jungle and probably okay. near the... Uh, the Dinoflow jungle, too, so I'm the Schneebitz and Furnum. Right. Schneebitz and Furnum, Furnum right. attorneys right. at law. Right, yeah. exactly. Uh, Jurassic Express, actually, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus, the number three ranked tag team here in All Elite Wrestling. They will have their eyes on Dynamite tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT. The Young Bucks defend the AEW World Tag Team Championships against the acclaimed. Bear Bronson starting things out with Jungle Boy Bronson. Sends Jungle Boy across. Jungle Boy, though, Boat. escapes. And slides between the legs of Bronson, using his quickness to great effect here, Ricky. Well said, Ricky. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, so you see. <laughs> He's, he's mesmerized by Jungle Boy. I am. I, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> <laughs> and up and over. Look at that handstand. Look at a bad flip. Look at this. Oh. But didn't take Bronson down. Two drop kicks. Bronson eats him and now gets knocked back to the corner. Jungle Boy's quickness. Yeah, well, Bronson, he's not in the uh, pine forest no more. <laughs> That's uh, where bears live. Uh, they're actually from up in upstate New York. Uh, in the, the Bear Mountain. Bear New Mountain, York. which I've been to. I ski uh, many times there. But this is a man who doesn't ski. He's a dinosaur. That's why he doesn't ski. And that's Luchasaurus. Look at the size of these two athletes here, Ricky Stalks. Honestly, I, you know what? My money's on the bear. Well, it's which bear? There's two bears. Bear Bronson? Yes, the bear in the That's ring. That's Brad Boulder. That's Boulder. I like Boulder and I like Bronson. All right. So you like both the bears, Boulder and Bronson. Yeah, they're both beautiful. All right. Beautiful both, bears. Both beautiful bears, Bronson and Boulder. Oh. Luchasaurus blocks the clothesline. Big back elbow to oh. Boulder. Breaking the bum brussel. <laughs> Tremendous <laughs> line of night. Here we go. <laughs> Ooh, hook kick or question mark kick there. Drops Bronson down to his knees. Now Jungle Boy coming in. Coming in hot, coming in oh. quick. Casadora into oh. the flatliner. Yeah, Bronson landed hard right on his face right there. Luchasaurus has got him where he wanted. Look at Jungle! Whoa! Oh. Jungle Boy, the senton, hooks the far leg. Bronson not down for long. Barely a one count there for Jungle Boy. You think they're related to the Bernstein Bears? No. Okay. No, I have heat with those bears either. And also, that's a whole nother story. But these round <laughs> kicks, I do. I have a lot of heat with those bears. Yes, and Ricky. <laughs> Jungle Boy charging in. Boulder. Ah, nice. Smart. Smart. Pulls his partner out of the way. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh. Whoa, Taz. Whoa, whoa. What the hell is 
Did you see that? Uh, did I see it? Yeah, I saw it. It's gimmick infringement, damn it. Bronson, oh, Planet Jungle Boy. I mean, that wasn't even on the, the head and neck. That was all head. Jungle Boy came down very high on the crown of his head. He is stunned, and now Bronson tagging out to Boulder as Bear Country going to work on Jungle Boy. Just two, two massive men. There's no way Jungle Boy can even get out of the corner with those two there. That's the bad part about it. You can see he is very, uh, he's in very bad, dangerous territory here at the hands of Bear Boulder. Yeah, Boulder is just, he's just gigantic. Back elbows, short clotheslines, everything. Hammer throw across. And the Whoa, big bang. back body drop sends Jungle Boy up and drops him down hard. This boulder is just a, just a massive bear-like human man animal, but different. <laughs> yes, a right. bearable, a bear amount. Yes, a bear woman. Yeah. And now here comes Bronson. Well, at the bare minimum, Jungle Boy needs to make his way over to the <laughs> corner, tag in Luchasaurus. Yeah, well, that's Ooh. the thing out of all three of these men. Obviously, <clears throat> excuse me, Jungle Boy is the uh, least biggest. I don't like saying. The least biggest. Well, because I don't like saying someone's. I don't believe in using the S word. Sure. About it. I don't believe in it. There's no oh, reason. Oh, it's a clubbing lariat, though. Just cuff Bronson. Oh. Swing and a miss. And yeah, Jungle Boy is giving up a lot of size, but he makes up for it. Uh -oh. Quickness and agility. Oh. And Whoa! Luchasaurus, big pump kick. Takes Boulder down. Sends Bronson in the corner, left and right, digging. The German. Whoa! Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. Nice kip up right there by an, an animal, a dinosaur that is 65 <laughs> million years old, my friends. Oh. Bronson getting, or Boulder, excuse me, getting back down by those chops from Luchasaurus. Oh! oh. Man, Luchasaurus. Here comes Bronson. He might be getting goozled and choke slam. Yeah, sure thing. Tremendous strength, tremendous agility from Luchasaurus here. Two, no, Boulder in time to break it up. I've never seen this side of Luchasaurus before. My God. Well, it's very rare that he's in there with, with men that are anywhere near his size. So I guess, he, you know, he's amping it up for sure, the intensity and the physicality. Good point. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Broken clock's right twice a day, Ricky. <laughs> oh. Oh. Boulder just knocking Jungle Boy into the Oof. corner. High boot drops Luchasaurus. Bronson standing oh. over. Oh! oh, my. oh. oh. <laughs> Calls that the monster driver. That's called the monster driver. Oh, he oh. nailed him. God, just crushing the sternum. Here we go. Holy assy chest. <laughs> Boulder. Oh, oh what whoa. a middle rope moon salt press. We have an upset in the making. Whoa! Oh. Wow. Boulder can't believe it. I can't believe it. Holy smokes, that was close. Look at this. The number three oh, tag oh. team in all elite wrestling was very nearly upset here tonight on AEW Dark. Boulder cannot afford to waste any time. He cannot allow Jungle Boy to get back into this match. Bear Country, man, they are stamping who they are right here in AEW for sure on Dark. Looking good. Jungle Boy. Taking a little while though here, Excal, but it takes some time to do this double team maneuver. Oh, uh -oh. my God. They are. Jungle Boy's had an opportunity to recover. It's like Bolt is lifting, lifting a Bron small foreign car. Luchasaurus. Springboard. Springboard. Oh, oh, my oh God. God. Oh, no. Doomsday device on Bronson. Bronson landed on top of his head. Hook kick there on Boulder. Jungle Boy coming off clothesline. Didn't drop Boulder. Oh, oh man. Boulder knocked, knocked down, and Bronson. Bronson is nowhere. Bronson even knows where the hell he is right now. He is in real trouble here. The corkscrew kick. Oh. The shot to the back of the head. Jungle Boy. One, two, three. Wow. The winner of this match, Jurassic Express. Well, Taz, that was. An impressive yet bowling shoe ugly victory for the Jurassic Express. Uh, yeah, no, you're right, man. You are. I mean, it doesn't matter how pretty or ugly it is. A win's a win, as you know, Excalibur. But, but uh, definitely an impactful matchup for sure. Physical. We have ladies action coming up next. Tasha Price goes one on one with the ever so dangerous Nyla Rose with Vicky Guerrero in her corner.
This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Chelsea, Michigan, Tesha Price. Tasha Price making her return to AEW Dark here tonight. She is going to have her work cut out for her against the native beast, Nyla Rose, Ricky. You know what? I think Tesha is in for a rude awakening. With Nyla Rose the beast. Oh, I thought she was wrestling Rick Rude. No. And her opponent, being accompanied to the ring by Vicky Guerrero from Washington, D.C., the native beast, Nyla Rose. That is wow. a hell of a sweater there on Vicky Guerrero. Well, it's the holiday season, and Nyla and Vicky, they, well, what screams the holidays? Any more than this right here, these two ladies. Did you say it's the Halloween season? I said holiday wise ass. Okay. Holiday season. Stalks in the stands. I'm tired of my New York accent being attacked, raped, and pillaged out here. I'm telling you, Excalibur. Do you have any good plans for Christmas? No. All right. You're not invited to the house. What, is, what did I do? The wife's mad at me, ain't she? No, I'm mad at you. I know. Hook don't even like you. I Mrs. Know. Taz actually a big Ricky Starks fan. That's what I hear. She's not a Taz fan. But anyway, well, who is? <laughs> I hear you. We're going to watch Tesha. Price here go one on one against Nyla. You're right, ex Cowboy. It's going to be tough goings here for young Miss Price. She's always very exuberant. Offering the hand shake. Maybe not a smart move. Oh! Nice. Big strength, big power. Or by the number two oh. ranked Nyla Rose, who just eating a couple oh. couple elbow strikes, but shuts down Tesha Price with a knee to the midsection and shuts oh. back. Just ripped uh, the tracks Price. out. Yeah, I was speaking, sir. Sorry. Almost missed that. <laughs> You know what? Listen. Stalks, I'm telling you, bro. The boot up by oh. Tesha Price. The kick to the side of the head. Nyla swinging a miss. Tesha Price continuing to batter Nyla, but Nyla just, her strength almost too much. Tesha Price. Whoa. High round kick to the head. Rose ate that. Here comes Price. Uh oh. Uh oh. This could be oh. the end of the road for Tesha Price. Fighting her way out of it, trying to go for a sunset flip here, but Nyla. Whoa, whoa. Nyla with the double hand grip brings Tesha up to her feet. Tesha breaks free. Oh, 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 oh man. <laughs> I love it. Hitting, Tesh. The, hitting the power like like Starks will nail somebody <laughs> like that or Hobbs or KJ. I'm sorry, sir. Hell yeah. Tesha, Tesha Price peppered Nyla Rose with, I think, a good six or seven strikes throughout the duration of this match. One single strike from Nyla Rose shut down Tesha Price. Shows the toughness of Nyla Rose and oh, 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 oh. drop was nasty. What a badass Nyla Rose is. Nyla Rose is stopping the midsection of Tesha Price. One of the most highly skilled Among Us players on the AEW roster as well. Ooh. We're never invited to that. No, we're, not invited, never. we're never invited to anything. You're right. Ever. Team Taz, big Twitch presence. <laughs> Nyla, oh, way slammed, tossing Tesha Price across as a very pleased Vicky Guerrero looks on. What does Vicky get wearing those sweaters in orange and black? What does it make them? I would like that. I'm well, thinking for you to wear, Ricky. You, you, don't, wear, you don't wear arms. Yeah, he wouldn't do it. Splash in the corner. Conflicts with his skin tone, Taz. Oh! It does. It does. Hey, close oh. time. Nyla just obliterating Tesha Price here. I think Tesha is, uh, the end is near for this young lady. Oh. Right in the side of the head. Nothing fancy about it. It's just a running knee to the side of the head. Nyla. Seems like she could end this at any time she wants. There's no doubt about it, Excalibur. Oh, what's this now? She, oh, we've seen her use this. Oh, yes, oh, yes. This yes. massive knee drop before. Springboard. Oops. Nyla heading up to the top, and the oh. knee comes down on the back of Tesha Price's head. Forget about it. One, two, three. Now the winner of this match, the native beast, Nyla Rose. Well, the vicious vixens, Vicky Guerrero and Nyla Rose, they have made some oh. sort of alliance with Jade Cargill. And they have Brandy Rhodes. They have the entire AEW women's division in their sights.
Coming up next on AEW Dark, the Concrete Rose, Sonny Kiss goes one on one with the best man, Miro, ahead of his explosive announcement tomorrow night on Dynamite. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Jersey City, New Jersey, weighing 188 pounds, the Concrete Rose, Sonny Kiss. Sunny Kiss, most often seen as of late in tag team competition alongside Joey Janela, the bad boy. But the Concrete Rose going solo here tonight against the best man. Amazing flexibility as always by Kiss. Originally from Plovdiv, Bulgaria, now residing in Nashville, Tennessee, weighing 280 pounds, he is the best man, Miro! Taz Miro, last week on Dynamite, promised an explosive, pun completely intended, announcement about the wedding date, the upcoming nuptials between Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford. But we would be remiss if we did not mention what happened two weeks ago on Dynamite at the conclusion of that Dynamite Diamond matchup where MJF required the assistance of the Inner Circle, required the assistance of Miro and Kip Sabian to beat Orange Cassidy to capture that Dynamite Diamond ring for the second consecutive year. We basically saw Miro take a human being and chuck them from the stage, and I don't even know if that person landed yet. Oh. Wow, Roma landed. What a high round kick to the back of the head. Miro was fined $75,000 for the attacks on the AEW staff, and that Kick to the head, just drop Sonny Kiss. Yeah, you listen, Miro, he is loaded with intensity, oh. power, and size, and speed. Man. He's looking for the game over, but Sonny able to avoid it. I love that name, game over. Ooh, Ooh Sonny with a roundhouse kick of his own. Staggers Miro back towards center. Ooh. Slides through the legs. Oh, jawbreaker there. I was going to say, maybe Sonny has the quickness advantage. Could be. Uh-oh. Ooh, step up work on Rana. Blocked by Miro, but whoa, whoa. no, Sonny. Sonny using that powerful lower body to drive Miro into the corner, and Miro though, uh-oh. Whoa, whoa. Ooh. Big slap to the face of Sonny. That might have been a mistake. Miro by Sonny, yeah. Might have been a mistake. Sonny. Don't want to piss this, this big monster off. Sonny rethinking a lot of the life choices that got him to this place, <laughs> starting with that big slap to the face of Miro. Diving hook on Rana, takes down Miro, Sonny. Yeah, good job by Sonny. Whoa, oh, ooh, big boot, landing in a split. Roll up, roll up, roll up here, one, two, Miro. Firing his shoulder off the count, oh! Right in the side of the temple, caught just barely, but enough. Kiss might be knocked out right now. Miro, I mean, we've seen it against the best friends. We've seen it against Orange Cassidy. Miro has such a mean streak. I love that about Miro. And by the way, I think we need to mention rare opportunity to see him in action oh. here. Here we go. Just wrenching. Oh, oh baby. God. Sonny Kiss. The game is over indeed. Completely trying to snap the spine in half of Kiss. Miro. The winner of this match. Miro. Man, that was wild, man. Talk about full extension on a submission hold. Taz Miro calls himself the best man. I would say would you do have to be pretty tough to argue with him. Yeah, really. No one's going to get drunk at Kip's wedding. They got to deal with Miro kicking the door crap out of him. Miro very impressive in action here tonight on Dark. We are looking forward to his announcement tomorrow night on Dynamite. I've been going die hard. How's your back? It's a little bit sore. Oh my God. <laughs> What's up? I want to talk about wrestling with the week. Whatever we have interest in, we're going to chop it up. Did you get the PS5? Uh, Scorpio Sky and myself, James Wilms. <laughs> we're going to be talking about video games. We're going to be talking about pop culture. Have you seen the New York Subway Rat Man? What? <laughs> we're going to be recapping AEW. We're basically going to be talking about the week. Make sure you subscribe now. Everyone smile!
Well, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to another episode of The Waiting Room. And without further ado, the doctor will see you now. Here's your host, my dentist, and yours, the role model and the face of AEW Women's Division, the incomparable Dr. Britt Baker. Go doctor, 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 go doctor. Thank you, Reba, and thank all of you so much. And Reba and myself would like to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas on behalf of the waiting room. And we'd also like to thank Tony Khan for fixing our wall that Scorpio Sky ruined, just like he ruins every single episode of Dynamite he's ever been. Oh, don't touch oh. that, the paint's not dry. Sit down. Speaking of the holidays and the giving season, I hope everybody saw our gift to Thunder Rosa last week, a complimentary holiday facial. She's never looked better. <laughs> This just in today, we have it booked. It's on the calendar. Sting will be here on the waiting room, in this room, on this couch, next to me, next to Reba. We can't wait. There'll be snow. You guys, you cannot miss this one, right? Let's talk about Dynamite tomorrow because we have a huge episode. The Butcher versus Pack, Pack, Pack. The butcher just so happens to be wrestling someone who never fails to butcher the English language. <laughs> we don't know what you're saying, mate. <laughs> Chris Jericho and MJF of the Inner Circle will be taking on Top Flight. It's unfortunate for Darius and Dante that their 15 minutes of fame will be done after this, but that's okay because they're only 15 years old. Tons of time to recover, unlike our next guests who have been around since the beginning of time. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, CD's hair was once longer than mine. <laughs> we would love to introduce now our guests. We're so excited to have them here. Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian of S. See you! SCU! Yeah! SCU! 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 Oh, great entrance, great entrance, guys. You were off, you're off. We'll add that to the list of botches of SCU. Okay, so, Frank. I appreciate your attempted humor, Britt, but, um, not really in the mood to giggle right now. Wasn't supposed to be like this, was it? Let me take you back to last October, the inaugural AEW World Tag Team Title Tournament. It was supposed to be you and I, run through everybody, become tag team champion just like we have everywhere we've been. That didn't happen, did it? You got taken out, Scorpio Sky stepped in, and him and I, made history when we became the first ever AEW Tag Team Champions. Here we are almost a year later, and I think it's safe to say across the board, it's been a pretty rotten year. We've all lost something, some more than others. We've all, we've all lost a part of ourselves. But through it all, through all the disappointment and all the setback and all the frustrations, I knew that I could rely on SCU. I knew that I could rely on Scorpio Sky. And I knew that I could rely on Christopher Daniels. Until now. Last week on Dynamite, we wrestled the acclaimed, and you lost. Yeah, I know you got hit by a boombox, but you lost. As a matter of fact, any time we've been defeated as a team, that's been on you. Yeah, I know, this seems a little harsh, doesn't seem like I'm putting you on blast, but Chris, you need to understand something about me. Being successful in this business is more important to me than you will ever know. I'm just a kid from SoCal, who for the last 22 years have been provided a life that I could have only dreamed of. Everything I have is because of professional wrestling. 
I've met my best friends because of this business. I met my wife because of this business. I have an eight-year-old son that I adore because of this business. And the roof over his head, the clothes on his back, every meal he has ever eaten has been provided because of this business. So yeah, I've let professional frustrations get in the way of personal relationships. Because Chris, you're not just my tag team partner, are you? You're my best friend. You're my brother. You were the best man at my wedding. You and I, for 20 years, have traveled the globe together, and we've been inseparable. So for allowing, for allowing those professional frustrations to affect a personal relationship, I apologize. Stop. Stop. Just stop, okay? Stop. Don't apologize for being passionate about what you love. You are the epitome of a professional in this business. You are a fan that grew up to be one of the best wrestlers on the planet, and I'm proud to call you my partner and my friend, so don't apologize to me. I need to apologize to you because I lost that passion that you're talking about. You want to talk about how bad 2020 is? 2020 was the worst year in my professional life. It was a wasteland of failure. And I let injury and adversity beat me and grind me down until the very thought of stepping into that ring filled me with nothing but fear and anxiety. I hated coming to work every week. The thought of getting on the plane made me sick to my stomach, Frankie. It made me sick. I've been falling apart for the last 10 months. And I always said to myself that I would know when it was time to walk away. So maybe all this stuff that's happened to me, all this failure, all this falling down, maybe that's a sign that it's time for me to walk away before I ruin the reputation of Christopher Daniels forever. Whoa. No, no, no. That, that, so you're just gonna walk off into the sunset? Leave with a whimper? No, no, no. You don't get to do that. You don't get to do that to me. You don't get to do that to them. You don't get to do that to the people that have stood by your side and supported your career for almost 30 years. You don't get to do that to your wife and your children and your friends and our friends. And most importantly, you don't get to do that to yourself. I know you better than anybody, CD. And if there's one thing I know that you are, and that's a fighter. When your back is against the wall, you will fight. When the pressure is on, you will fight. So I am asking you one more time to fight by my side. These are drastic times, CD. So I'm going to throw out some drastic measures, and I need you to agree to this. Right now, we are at the bottom of the barrel of the tag team division. But we will fight, we will claw, we will work our way to the top, and we will become AEW Tag Team Champions. Because from here on out, the next time you and I lose as a tag team, you and I are done as a tag team. Forever. Let's do it. You know what, TH2, I saw you guys sleezing around, there you are. Don't think we forgot about you guys. We'd like to cordially invite you into that ring to receive your exclusive one-of-a-kind SCU ass beating. Thank you. 
TH2, you didn't have to sit in the crowd. You co oh. totally could have gone backstage past as your friends of the show. But uh, Reba, oh don't remind us to never book them again because I didn't get to say one freaking word on my whole show. Come here. Okay. Come on. Merry Christmas and happy holidays from the waiting room. Let's do it. Good night, everybody. This is the waiting room. She's Reba, and I am Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. Cue the music. Had a conversation earlier today with Thunder Rosa. She is in action next, and she is not in a good mood. This bout is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Orlando, Florida, Jasmine Ulur. Taz, is Orlando, Florida close to Hellgate, Florida? It's, uh, it's fair to Midland. <laughs> Jasmine Allure making her AEW Dark debut, AEW debut. We will see what she has to offer against a, a, a as you mentioned, Taz, a very fired up Thunder Rosa. And her opponent, from the graveyards of Tijuana, Mexico, Thunder Rosa. Yeah, to your point, you know, don't, don't let that smile fool you, ladies and gentlemen, watching right now on YouTube here, because Thunder Rosa, like you said, Excalibur, fired up. She's an ultra-intense competitor and a very dangerous woman for sure. So this young competitor she's going against, Miss Allure, is probably going to have a, <laughs> a hands full immensely here. Thunder Rosa, of course, last week on AEW Dynamite, she was being interviewed by our own Alex Marvez and Dr. Britt Baker and Rebel ambushed her, continuing the assault, saying once again that Thunder Rosa doesn't belong in AEW. She's an outsider, Tess. I think she's a very welcome addition to the AEW women's division. Of course, I'm not the locker room leader like the doctor is. You're definitely not, <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> nor am I. But, uh, you know, and I have nothing but respect for Dr. Britt Baker. She's a close personal friend of mine, and we get free dental care in Team Taz. That's a whole other story. But, I do think Thunder Rosa also, Thunder Rosa belongs for sure. She's, she's part of our, our family, in my opinion. And right now, she's changing some wrist locks, top wrist lock. Now we see Rosa with a top wrist lock. Stepping behind the leg of Jasmine Allure, using that leverage to drive, drive her down and sweeps out the leg. Lateral press here, just a one count. I think she realized Allure was about to get into a bridge, so she swept out that leg, goes back to that top wrist lock, or some would consider a key lock up top. Jasmine Allure making her way back up to the feet. Her swoop into the ropes. Oh, swept out the leg of Thunder Rosa. And Allure with a double foot drop kick takes down Thunder Rosa, hooks the far leg. Barely a one count, though. Yeah, you got to try to get all your body weight on top of someone like Thunder Rosa. She's, you know, she, it's going to be tough to get a victory oh. over that early. Wow, what a shot. <laughs> Blistering knee shot. strike. From Thunder Rosa right there. Yeah, well, she's also, you know, highly trained in Muay Thai kickboxing. is Thunder Rosa besides her grappling abilities. So, you know, she, she's a hybrid fighter. That's what she really is. Oh, Jasmine Allure getting brutalized by those kicks right between the shoulder blades. And this could be a oh, preview. Look at, look at this, look at this, look at this. Oh, double knee strike of what Thunder Rosa would have in store for Dr. Britt Baker were she to get her hands on her. Covers here. Smart that move. She realized her opponent was close to the rope, so she was going to go for a cover, get her away from the rope so she can't use the bottom rope for, you know, a, a break. Yeah, forcing forcing the kick out, forcing her opponent to expend energy. Nice body shot right there. And Thunder Rosa, of course, as we mentioned, has been, uh, has been training on her strikes with uh, our, our oftentimes broadcast partner here on AEW Dark, Anthony Agogo. Yes, that's a great guy oh. to deal with striking for sure. Cover here after the power slam. Two count again, Jasmine Allure, not out of this fight yet. Yeah, she's shown some heart, this young lady is for sure. Jasmine bringing, trying to bring herself back up to a vertical base, but Thunder Rosa pressing the attack here. Oh, man. A lot of power in that chop. Some people might think, well, how can a chop really hurt? Listen. Oh, yeah, it's just <laughs> right in the sternum. It's just a thudding, painful. Deal, man. Another one's coming. Oh, enough back elbow. That's a nice shot right there. Now, quick Ukemi roll, and here comes Thunder Rosa. Oh, nobody home. She created some distance, but 
Jasmine Allure capitalizing. Oh, nice. Well done. Quick roll into that round kick to the back. Allure trying to get a few moves together. Casadora, what's going on here? Casadora, no! Jasmine Allure turned things around, hooks the leg. Didn't quite have yeah. the weight evenly distributed on the shoulders of Thunder Rosa there. That's a tough cover right there. You know, I understood she, the young lady ended up in that spot sitting on her opponent, but you got to have quick hip spin. Oh, God, what a chop. Ooh, knee strike was on, on the point, on point. Kick to the midsection, has her doubled over, single leg drop kick to the side of the head. I want to remind fans that AEW Dynamite will be on tomorrow night at 10 o'clock or after the conclusion of the NBA on TNT. Don't want to miss it. It's Thunder Rosa. Oh! God. Fire Thunder Driver. Gotta be it. Hooks the leg and three. The winner of this match, Thunder Rosa. Told you she was in the pissed off mood. <laughs> you could say almost a Taz-esque mood. I'm coming for you, H. Britt Baker. Why would you piss off Rosa? Well, it's easy to see why. And Thunder <laughs> Rosa is fired up, and she has Britt Baker in her sights. Oh! Alora lands right on her upper spine there. Pinfall's fundamental right there. It's, you're not kicking out. It's just not happening. Absolutely not. An impressive victory here tonight for Thunder Rosa on AEW Dark. This is the story of Matt and Nick Jackson, seen through their eyes. Over the past 20 years, they have documented their tireless journey, their triumphs, and their tribulations. And now, they are ready to share their adventures with the world in their new book. One day, let's grow up and let's be professional wrestlers. This is the story of two brothers that became two loving fathers that went on to become the best tag team in professional wrestling today. This is the story of the Young Bucks killing the business. Young Bucks, we're killing the business. The Dark Order has been appealing to Dustin Rhodes, trying to get him on their side. Will the Nightmare Family's Lee Johnson will step up for his mentor, Dustin, and go one-on-one -on -one with Stu Grayson, the Dark Order, next. This bout is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring first from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing 180 pounds, Lee Johnson. He's got the uh, very famous QT Marshall right there in his corner. He most certainly does. Big shotty Lee Johnson, the newest member of the Nightmare family. He will have his work cut out for him here tonight. Yeah, Lee Johnson, very talented, as is the QT Marshall. Marshall, I should say. And his opponent from the keep, weighing 193 pounds, Stu Grayson. Stu Grayson, a rare singles appearance here. And we will see Evil Uno in singles action tomorrow night on AEW Dynamite at 10 p.m. or immediately following. The NBA action on TNT. He will be taking on Dustin Rhodes. Cole Cabana, by the way, if you notice, Cole Cabana has a new uh, jacket on, a gift, a holiday gift from the Dark Order. On BT, it was given to him, spray painted the Dark Order logo on it. See right there, it says boom. And on the back, it's like some smudge on it. It says, uh, boom, it says also. boom also, yeah. <laughs> That's great. It's great for him while he's driving a minivan to soccer practice. He's a soccer dad or uh, a coach or a substitute teacher. He's got a little minivan that's oh. like kind of a Carolina blue. I digress. Right now, Lee Johnson's getting lit up here by Stu. Ooh. Lee Johnson in the uh, the Carolina blue trunks. Well, that's well, one of the turquoise, yeah, but yeah. what do I know hey. about the Pantone color sheet? But I digress on that. You want to? You want to? You want to go? We'll wanna, go. Hey, I know. Come on, bro. I know, bro. I know. You, you know, coded or uncoded? I know uncoded. But okay. there we go. I know what's coded is Lee Johnson strikes on Stu Grace in the corner. Irish whip into the ropes. Leapfrog goes over the top and does Lee Johnson drop Whoa. kick, but he telegraphed it. Grayson able to hold on. Yeah, smart by the veteran Stu Grayson. He realized that. Oh, nice running elbow. Lee Johnson, of course, a great prospect. Uh, QT Marshall, Dustin Rhodes both see a lot in Lee Johnson. He's still searching for his first victory inside an AEW ring. 
Well, the biggest problem that Lee Johnson did was get involved with the Nightmare family, Cody Rhodes. Uh, he's uh, Cody Rhodes is kind of leading a lot of these young athletes the wrong way, and uh, that's a problem. And Lee Johnson is tremendously talented. I think that uh, Cody's sketchy, and QT's a, a tad sketchy also. That's just me. Lee Johnson. Oh! Lee Johnson was going to try to come over the top with, I think, a senton, but Grayson got the boot up, and oh! oh, oh. Driving his shoulder into the midsection, and, and look at that sneer. Yeah, he gave that look to QT Marshall, like, you better be careful. Well, QT's smart. He's not going to get involved right there in front of the referee, but look at that athleticism right there by Stu Grayson. Oh, great reversal there inside the ring by Lee Johnson. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Went, went for the scoop, but... Grayson able to float over the top. Ooh, blistering right hand. Watch out, watch and out. Oh, oh. You're a Nagi. He's strong right there. Wow. And did you see the recoil, how Lee Johnson bounced off the canvas cover here? Well, exactly. Good observation. Look at the tenacity by Stu Grayson forcing the younger athlete, Lee, to kick out. And Stu Grayson is one of those guys that loves to, to exchange strikes, Taz. I mean, those guys are they're a different breed. They, they like to take yeah. take three to deliver one, almost. Absolutely. You know Stu Grayson and Evil Uno a lot longer than me, and they've always been like that, right or wrong. Always just looking for a fight. They'd love to just brawl, right or wrong. Uh, you are, you're most certainly right. I, I remember uh, Evil Uno and I had a singles match in 2005, and I came out of the gates hot, and he fired back on me mm. like I, I could not believe. And so, yeah, Dark Order, has they have been a force in professional wrestling for over 15 years now. Cross-facing Lee Johnson right in the face. There are a couple of cross-faces. That'll definitely, you know, George, uh, jack your jaw, I should say. A lot of trash talking by, by Grayson. Grayson trying to... Oh! I think he was trying to, trying to draw Lee, Lee Johnson into a fist fight, and he just dropped him with a single shot. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. He was trying to, but he's banged up right now. He's trying to... Trying to get his sea legs under him. He can't even get to a vertical base right now. He's having a hard time. Especially with someone stepping on your face. Come on, Lee, you're better than this. Bring it to me. Come on, Lee, fight me. Fight me. Well, that's to your point. He wants that. He wants to get Lee into a fist fight with him. And Lee's in no position right now to do that, I don't think, anyway. Yeah, Stu Grace has got that moniker born and bred uh -oh. for combat. Uh -oh. oh! Johnson caught, caught Grayson on the shoulder. Yeah, very good job. Good athletic move by Lee, nice, another back elbow like we saw earlier. Watch out. Lee Johnson leaps over Grayson, but Johnson comes back, clothesline, second one. And you hear QT giving direction, saying stay on him. He knows he's got Stu right now rocking a little bit. Grayson though puts on the brakes, gets the boot up. Oh, nice duck. Swinging a Whoa. miss, drop kick there. Lee Johnson, big shotty with the big shot. The yeah, big shotty caught. Stu Grayson right in the chest with that drop kick. Sometimes that's better than hitting someone in the face. Knock the wind out of them. As we mentioned, the Nightmare Family's Dustin Rhodes will go one-on-one -on -one with Dark Order's Evil Uno tomorrow night on Dynamite, 10 p.m., or immediately following the presentation of the oh. NBA on TNT. Blue Thunder Bomb, one, two, two, no, just a two count. Blue Thunder Bomb not wearing Carolina blue tights. Blue Thunder Bomb by Lee Johnson, of course. A shout out, an homage to one of his favorites, El Generico. Huh? And Lee Johnson. Oh, no, they are giving direction to Stu Grayson. Coming off the back. He was trying for, for one of his, uh, his, oh, he's got a half, his yeah. favorite finishing techniques, but full Nelson, actually. I thought he had a half and half. But Lee Johnson shooting at some, some back elbows. Trying to roll through, does roll through, but Grayson up to his feet now. Oh, 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 dragon suplex and Grayson, the back flip and kick, catching Lee Johnson on the crown of his head. Yeah, that dragon throw, that dragon suplex, and Lee landed on his face. That was nasty. Evil Uno, springboard, 450, splash, covers one, two, whoa! Wow. Big toughness right there by Lee Johnson for sure, but God, man. I, I, Stu Grayson just is and, just and Grace is, he's, Grace he's, he's pleased. He's impressed. He's yeah. impressed, yeah. Happy with the tenacity of Lee Johnson. Uh-oh. This, he's pulling down the knee pad. That, this could spell the end of the evening for a big shot. He, no, got caught. He's able to avoid it, rolls him up on two. 
Just a two count there. Oh, he's exposed that kneecap. He wanted to drive his knee on a knee strike, but no more backslide here. Look at this. Backslide, high stack by Johnson. He was up on the on the top of his head. Oh, swing and a miss by Johnson. Nice kip up. Oh, he missed. He, oh, oh he, he thought Lee was there still. He was gone. Maybe going for power bomb here. Picks him up. He's carrying Grayson. Oh, buckle Double bomb. Jeez. Power bomb into that top turnbuckle. Lee Johnson has Stu Grayson right where he wants him, Taz. Yeah, he sure does. And this, you know, this kid Lee Johnson can definitely operate. I shouldn't call him a kid. This young athlete can operate from the top rope. Oh! What the hell? Wow! Cancun Tornado by Lee Johnson covers two. Oh! Grayson! Great match sense by Stu Grayson to realize where he was. Tremendous ring awareness by Grayson as Evil Uno drawing his, his tag team partner out of the ring to to collect himself. Man, Lee Johnson, I think. I haven't seen that move in years. Yeah. I, I don't remember the last time I saw it. It's tremendous. Watch out! Oh, no! oh, on the sternum, right on that steel guardrail. You got him now, Stu. Get him in the ring, man. Get, get rolling now. You got him. Grayson. Hoist up Lee Johnson on the outside. He's staring QT Marshall right whoa, in the whoa, eye. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, oh, God. Oh, my God. God, that was ugly. Just throws Johnson ribs first at that ring post. How mean is Stu Grayson? That's what you want, that kill or be killed attitude. Watch this. Watch Lee Johnson's body. His ribs right on the side. Oh, oh that knee strike. Inside the ring, the bicycle knee strike. I think Lee's done here. Yeah, Grayson can end this anytime he wants. And it looks like this could be the end of the night for Lee Johnson. Grayson with a nice oh. fall. Oh, and those injured ribs. One, two, three. The winner of this match, Stu Grayson. Well, Stu Grayson. Probably one of the most underrated wrestlers in the world. And if you know enough about this guy's ability or you didn't just realize what he did, it's not an overstatement by me, I promise you that. Grayson with that, that nightfall, that, that backbreaker, rip breaker, whatever it was, he softened Lee Johnson up with the ring post, and it was all academic from there. Hell of a match, though. Lee Johnson has nothing to be ashamed. I know he didn't get a win. I know he did not get a win, I should say, but it was a hell of an outing by Johnson. Hell of an outing by Stu Grayson. Oh. Grayson may not be done. Well, that's showing respect. And... Wow. QT's not. QT, I, I think, a little bit confused as we are about his nightmare family. I mean, it's Bulldog QT Marshall. Well, check this out. Women's action coming up next. We have Alex Gracia going one on one against Kylie King. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from San Antonio, Texas, Alex Gracia. Alex Gracia, known as the Pink Dream. Taz, I think I know the answer to this, but what? But let me know. Have you ever consider calling yourself the Orange Dream? Well, uh, no. The orange yeah. dreamsicle? Nothing? <laughs> no, orange and black cream sick with Jones? Not even that. Okay. Be queens and have some when we can be kings and have it all. And her opponent from Painesville, Ohio, Kylan King. Taz, a very big opportunity for both of these women. We've been told just a few moments ago that the winner of this match will be able to face Hikaru Shida, the AEW Women's World Champion, tomorrow night on Dynamite. Special edition of Dynamite, the Holiday Bash, airing at 10 p.m. or immediately following the NBA action on TNT. Just a massive, massive opportunity tomorrow night for one of these ladies. Let's see who wins this match. How important is this right now for, for either Alice Gracia or, or uh, Kylie King? It's just huge right now. Matt returned there by Kylan King. Alex Gracia, though, sat out and now taking the, the front chancery, though, Kylan King rolls through side headlock there. Yeah, good job right there in that side headlock. Let's see. Gracia's got, oh, just ate that shoulder tackle. And we've seen in the past Kylan King able to string together a few wins here 
in all elite wrestling. Alex Gracia looking for her first win, and what a big first win that would be Ooh. to earn herself a shot at the at Hikaru Shida. That's a, yeah, it's just a great opportunity. Anytime you can get in a ring with the world champion, in this case, Shida on Dynamite tomorrow night, is just a massive opportunity. So, for either one of these ladies, whoever comes out the victor, I think that, that's massive. Oh, Crucifix here. I would have to, I want to see you, what you think, in your opinion. I would uh, definitely. Roll up here, view, Kylan King. Sorry, Taz. That's okay. In my view, I would give the advantage to King in this deal here. Just from a size perspective, and she's. Had more wins, as you said, than than, than Gracia here. What yeah, about you? I, I agree. She's she's definitely gotten over the hump before, and Gracia comes through the kick to the face, almost like a modified area code shot, Taz. Yeah, the area code shot, City. Yep, cover watch here, out, watch out! Whoa! Alex Gracia trying to make short work of Kylan King. Well, she went for the cover quickly, which was smart by Alex. That was a good move right there. So you got to wonder if you are the AEW Women's Champion, you're watching this match, you want to see what these two young ladies, as you know, there's not as much tape on them as there would be. Well, not tape, but digital tape. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, as with maybe other ladies. And Ky Kylan King has had a had a chance to compete with Hikaru Shida before, and you know she's a she's a competitor that that trains with Dustin Rhodes, the natural. She she learns from her mistakes, and she covers here too. And uh, she would love nothing more than a second shot at Shida. That'll be tomorrow night at 10 p.m. on TNT or immediately following the NBA action, the Holiday Bash edition of AEW Dynamite. Yeah, it's going to be a massive edition of Dynamite for sure. Let's see. Oh, oh. Gracia can get all the way up on over, that. But, but still, rolls her up very nearly, got the two count. Sometimes with that type of up and over move, you don't have to get all the way up. And, it, and she was smart with Gracia, did turn it into that schoolgirl right there, that roll up. But Kylan King, those. Big shot stopping Gracia in her tracks. Now comes through the Tierras. Sends Kylan King for a ride. Alex Gracia here with a chance, a shot. The big elbow strike in the corner sweeps out the legs of Kylan King. Yeah, she's on a roll for sure, Alex Gracia. Let's see, let's see. Oh! oh. <laughs> Powerful running kick in the corner. Alex Gracia pulls her out to center. One, two, no. Kylan King able to kick out. Yeah, that was... Uh... I was close right there. King's got to be careful here. She's definitely got Alex Rouse. She's got a rolling. Ooh. Again, big, big opportunity for one of these athletes. Casadora here. Gracia lands on her feet. Oh, oh God. Oh, oh, man, that German. Sure. That might, she's done, dude. Alex is done. Kylan King, I don't think she realizes how high on the head and neck Alex Gracia landed. Oh, she might be knocked out. That was a nasty release German. Kylan King. Oh, no, Gracia. Escapes, the balance. escapes out the back door, grabs the hair, and oh, the neck breaker! Wow. Alex Gracia, one, two, three! Oh! Whoa! The winner of this match, Alex Gracia. Wow. Taz, a tremendous, and I think upset victory here for Alex Gracia, who has punched her ticket tomorrow night for Dynamite, where she will face AEW Women's World Champion Hikaru Shida. Big time opportunity tomorrow night for Alex Gracia. Wow. All right, guys, here we go. I can't wait to see it. Whoa. Que yo bendiga la botella. Oh my gosh, Chris, you've completely outdone yourself. But dead ass, yo, how is this even possible? I mean, look at the craftsmanship. It's so beautiful. Look how it turned out. It's absolutely exquisite. Drink with the Demo God drinks. A little bit of the bubbly is back, baby. Supplies are limited. Go to littlebitofthebubbly.com and order now. Get it before it's gone, because last year sold out. Viva el vino brioso! Pretty Peter Avalon is coming up next. Can't wait. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Reaching the ring from Carson City, Nevada, weighing 182 pounds, Pretty Peter. 
travel on. What that, a great that smile he has too, huh? Now is the moment that we've all been waiting for. Everyone's been waiting. Freddie Peters pageant provocation. Can't wait. P P P A. P. Yeah. Oh, it's time. <laughs> it is time. It is time. It's time. The first person, the first person to answer my unique open challenge, the first person to answer Pretty Peter's pageant provocation, it's a man whose face was made for television commercials. Mm. Here he is. <laughs> is he not going to tell us who he is? This is a great setup. Oh, my. <laughs> there he is. Oh, from Brooklyn, New York, weighing 225 pounds, he is Mike Verna. Mike Verna making his AEW debut and uh, answering the call of Pretty Peter's pageant provocation. Yes, uh, that's a big part of, uh, you know, Pretty Peter, his, uh, you know, provocation uh, pageant gimmick is someone who has uh, handsome good looks. You know, it was in good, fine, fickle, in good shape. Uh, I believe uh, also facial symmetry is a big part of uh, Pretty Peter's uh, pageant provocation. Oh, he's dealing with the Man of Steel now. The Man of Steel. 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 Craig O'Roman Close. knuckle lock. Good <laughs> <laughs> hammer lock by Avalon. Think when Avalon, you know, he's a very odd man. He's a very odd man, but he's very fundamentally sound. Very fundamentally, I mean, yeah, really, no doubt about it. I mean, it's just, he, he really, look how he breaks that hole with the elbow, the point of the elbow, and then gets the two on one and controls the arm. You know, point, uh, Tez, as you well know, pushing the, the point of the elbow into the wrist of the opponent will oftentimes force them to relinquish their grip. Yep, exactly, that's what happened. Now Avalon's got a side headlock here on Big Mike, the man of steel, Mike Verna. Backing Peter Avalon to the corner. Avalon, of course, protecting the cash register there. The face. Yeah, you got to be careful. That's the money maker. Oh, oh, like, oh, oh, not the face. Look at this, full Nelson. Phil Nelson uh, for sure, and swinging that full Nelson on the the man from Carson City, Nevada. Mike Verna, a very impressive display of strength there, Taz. Yeah, he's locked in. Got him. Waist lock. Maybe go for no counter roll here. No counter. Avalon backs off Verna. Verna goes for the trip. Avalon comes in, bypassed by Verna. Well, Verna's got the size, thickness. Tried to flex his pecs, they didn't move. I've never seen that ever, ever happen in my life. The guy flexed his pecs, they didn't move. I mean, that's what happens every time I try to flex mine, so it's not that surprising. But you'd think if you're going to break it out in a match like this. The guy's got good chest development, but they didn't move. It was really odd. Just make sure it works, man. These batteries. <laughs> Oh, oh, watch out. Verna with the slingshot. Another slingshot showing the power. Verna, third perhaps. That's hard to do, dude. Four slingshot. That's very hard to do. And Peter Avalon having fits. Very nearly pinned by Mike Verna. It takes a lot of power to do that. A lot of balance. Very innovative. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do that. Hey, we alive out here? Some would say, you know, why would you do that? Well, because it gets your opponent dizzy, because he keeps bouncing off ropes, and then you suplex him. And being held upside down. Yes, also that's drive, why uh, you get this. Yeah. Oh! Verna sent into that, uh, into the ring post. Shoulder, front of that shoulder. Avalon continuing the attack on Mike Verna's left arm. Pretty Pete Avalon, PPA. Locked in right now. A little flipper takeover right there. Maybe a short arm scissor by the good looking, handsome, debonair Peter Avalon with that just crazy cool mustache. Verna looking uh, short arm scissor. He's a. Uh, you said that already, man. I was gonna make sure. <laughs> you forget? Yeah, it's chair shots. Sometimes you hear echoes, everything. Oh, roll up. Here, Verna. Watch out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He stacked him for a nice attempt at a pin. <laughs> right into the midsection. Tez, your invisible friend Tim talking. Yeah, he he's keeps... talking to me, too. <laughs> he 
he's drinking. Watch <laughs> out! Whoa, hold on a second. Verna sent up and over the top. Oh! oh. Avalon stuck his head between the top and center rope like Barry Horowitz used to. Roll up here, one, two. Oh, Mike Verna. The power. The power, yeah. Oh, it didn't work. Oh, it brought up and oh, Avalon wrenches the arm, drives him down into the canvas. Yeah, Verna goes on the shoulder Over here. Two. Same shoulder hit the ring post or the turnbook, I should say earlier. Avalon drives Verna down on that front deltoid like he did earlier. Avalon driving Verna face first into that top turnbuckle pad. And Avalon really punishing that left arm of Mike Verna. Pretty Peter Avalon, the PPA himself. Really in control here. Yeah, the powerful chop there from Pretty Peter Avalon. Look at that palm strike. <laughs> Mike Verna, he just shrugged that off, man. Yeah. <laughs> God, that was tremendous. <laughs> come, come on, man. He's the man. <laughs> These body shots by the man of steel. See on his ass right there? You can't miss it. Oh, that's, oh, okay. I kept, on, man steel. kept on wondering why you were calling him that. <laughs> Mike Verna. Oh, missile drop kick by Big Verna. The mic knocks Avalon uh, uh, towards the far side of the ring. Quick series of clotheslines. Uh oh, it's on now. Verna. Charging in big right hand across the jaw of Peter Avalon. Very awkward run by that young man. <laughs> Tilt a world backbreaker by Mike Verna. Now he brings Avalon up to his feet over the top. Fisherman suplex one, two, no. A good S lock on that cradle. He had about 10 moves in a matter of 30 seconds. Sometimes if you focus on one or two moves, you just do them really aggressively and intense. That's all you need. You don't have to do as many, but it Verna's seems, focused right Yeah, now. it seems like all that work that Avalon put in on that left arm of Verna might be paying off, allowed him to uh, to break free of that S-grip yeah, on that true. fisherman suplex. Good point, yeah, good observation. Oh! oh, man, rough landing for Mike Verna there on the sent on Atomico attempt, and now Avalon Martinez! Oh, face first! One, two, three! The winner of this match, oh. Ready, Peter oh, he's got a boogie. Avalon. He's got a snot rocket came out. Look, another one. Oh, no, oh, it's moving. Oh, oh that's no. disgusting. Oh, no, no. Get that son bitch a tissue. That's a career ender. What is going on? Ready, Peter's pageant provocation will continue, boogers regardless. All over the adult film star mustache. That was kind of really disgusting. There we go. This wasn't disgusting. This is pretty. Speaking of pretty, Martini's Dunsky. And Avalon inside the ring offering Mike Verna a signed 8 by 10. Sharpie in the crotch. And you know what? Just stole Justin Roberts' Sharpie. Justin, go get it back. Yeah, I don't Justin. Know Justin wants that Sharpie in the wall. There it is. Oh, uh, yeah. Action in the women's division as Red Velvet goes one on one with Vert Vixen next here on AEW Dark. This bout is set for what fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first from Irvine, California, Vert Vixen. Vert Vixen from uh, right up the road for me, Taz, in Irvine. Really? Yeah. You should go to the gym with her. <laughs> I'm not driving two hours in traffic to go you to the gym. up the road. You know, it was two hours. You go two hours, you go get, get on a treadmill, you and Vert Vixen. Taz, you can't pay me to go to Orange County. Damn. You got more heat with them than I do with Jersey. And her opponent. Straight out of your mama's kitchen. Oh! Red Velvet. Straight out of your mama's kitchen. Love Red Velvet. She's great. Red Velvet always mixing it up, Taz. You have a new song? Is that a new song, a new Red Velvet song? I, I don't know the answer, but it's great. <laughs> Maybe we just weren't paying attention before. No, I always pay attention. Okay. Red Velvet, straight from your mama's kitchen, like you said, always stirring it up. Excellent athlete. Tremendous athlete. Yeah. We saw uh, that the hostilities between Red Velvet, Jade Cargill, Nyla Rose, 
Vicky Guerrero, Eva Lisa Diamante. I mean, she has got a laundry list of enemies here in AEW. Does Red Velvet? Yeah, and she don't care. She don't sweat it. She don't. She has no back down. You know, uh, like you know, she, no, no matter that she's not a, a a bigger individual, a bigger competitor. She's small dynamite. You know, package or whatever that helps cliche is that it is about the dynamite and small package. I totally get what you're saying, Taz. And uh, that's Red Velvet. But she also has a lot of backup too in in Big Swole and Serena Deeb. That's true. Very true. Vert Vixen right now. Whoa. Did not want to get out of that corner. I don't blame him, but Red Velvet said, all right, you don't want to get out of that corner. Well, I'm going to put, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to get on you. Chop you down. <laughs> There's that flexibility by Red Velvet, stirring it up. Good job right there. Vert Vixen, as you said, this is her AEW debut. Ooh, Velvet went, oh, went for the drop down, but Vert Vixen able to capitalize. From Orange County, California. Yes. Irvine. She mentioned New York. And, uh, I, know, I, I, New I just York. meant all Orange County. Oh, just in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the wrestler there in Orange County, New York, full time. <laughs> Thanks, Taz. All right. <laughs> Vert Vixen put on the brakes. Kick to the head of Red Velvet. Staggered her. Second kick there. Vixen. Whoa! Went for the step up, Enzi Gary. Red Velvet able to, uh, to avoid contact. And Red Velvet. Close quick line. Duck, quick duck. Ooh. Takes down Vixen. Second one takes her down. That's the quickness that you see. Look at those slips and ducks. By Red Velvet. Bob's yeah. weaves There's and. Bombs. There's a weave there. And the kick to the face. Red Velvet. That'd be a good six man team. Slip, Bob, and weave. It's the new gimmick. It's great. It's the new name for uh, nicknames for Team Tennis. No, it's not. That's it's not even funny. But it was kind of funny. You got slip, Bob, weave, and hook. Come on. <laughs> Right there, man. It's gonna be uh, t-shirts print themselves. I can hear the tweets coming in now, straight out of your mama's kitchen. Red Velvet standing, Moonsault Press hooks the far leg. Two count only for Vert, uh, on Vert Vixen. Yeah, Vert Vixen has had a hard time getting out of the blocks here for the most part against Red Velvet. Hammer throw into the corner. She didn't get all of that boot, but it was enough to, to stagger Velvet. Back unless Red Velvet is playing possum. I think she's a little knocked a little loopy, this young lady, Vert Vixen. Not able to balance herself on the ropes. Oh! oh God. Almost like an iconoclasm there from Red Velvet. Damn. Brings Vixen, she landed hard. Dude. Yeah, she brought her in the hard way, and now Red Velvet double Ooh. knees to the back of Vert Vixen. Oh, a single leg drop kick, single foot drop kick to the cross the jaw. Two, three. Winner of this match, Red Velvet. Red Velvet is on a roll, continues her upward trajectory here in AEW, Taz. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Just, man, every time we see her, she's basically on fire, man. She gets it done. Red Velvet, she's excellent. Excellent win, good job. Tough outing for Bird Fix. I've been going die hard. How's your back? It's a little bit sore. Oh my God. <laughs> What's up? I want to talk about wrestling with the week. Whatever we have interest in, we're going to chop it up. Did you get the PS5? Uh, Scorpio Sky and myself, James Willems. <laughs> we're going to be talking about video games. We're going to be talking about pop culture. Have you seen the New York Subway Rat Man? What? <laughs> we're going to be recapping AEW. We're basically going to be talking about the week. Make sure you subscribe now. The Dark Order is in six-man action. Coming up next, Colt Cabana and Dark Order is five and ten. This is a six-man tag team match set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring first at a total combined weight of 632 pounds, the team of Fuego del Sol, Aaron Solo, and Ray Chads. Mobile, Alabama's favorite luchador, Ray Jazz here, making his AEW debut. Mobile, Alabama's second favorite luchador, Fuego Del Sol. Team Hold on a second, wait a minute. Ray Jazz is from Mobile also? No, he's not. Well, it was a little confusing what you just said. Where's Ray Jazz? As, 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 right, exactly. I'm making a joke. And their opponents a from joke. the keep <laughs> at a total combined weight of 657 pounds. Dark order numbers 10, 5, and Colt. Boom, boom. Cabana. Now, Taz, I hate to correct Justin Roberts. Me too. 
But Colton Cabana is not a number. That's a name. It is. CC. Something like that. I think the, well, whatever. I was going to say the video wall of Colt Cabana really goes well with the music of the Dark <laughs> Order that we had up there a minute ago. That really oh, no, I'm, I'm not sure why, why you mentioned that because they they played the Dark Order video the entire time, Taz. As the production truck wants to kill me right now. That's a whole other story. <laughs> or they edited it in post and that just made you look bad. <laughs> <laughs> Allen Angels, Preston Vance, Colt Cabana teaming up here in Trio's competition to take on the debuting Ray Jazz and the not debuting Fuego Del Sol and Aaron Solo. It looks to be Cabana for his team, Fuego for his. Yes, I'm just studying the situation. That's what I do, as you know. I mean, you don't have to explain yourself to me. Well, it's for the audience. The friends Look at the power right there. Cole Cabana, he's ripped. Chisel Jack. I mean, you think all all of those soccer games he's on the sideline for and rooting on family members and all the kids and the minivan, you know, without the power steering, it's, makes you strong. You know what it is, Taz? It's vitamin C from all those orange slices. Oh, that's right. That's that, that's true. At, at, at halftime, you, you said I heard, you heard me say orange, and you had to pause for a moment to, to like make heat, sure. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> but I did. I was actually talking about the, the legitimate at halftime. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Fuego up to his feet, backflip, lands on his feet once again, goes under, breaks the grip of Cabana, oh. drop kick. Fuego do Sol. Cabana, Cabana left yeah, it all. smile on his face. Whoa, watch out. Fuego trying for a uh, monkey flip in the corner, but Cabana, <laughs> Cabana just Cabana. carrying the weight out to center. Fuego goes over the top looking for a sunset flip. And Cabana, that's actually pretty funny. He usually gets on my nerves cold, but that's pretty good. Listen, I've talked about Cabana many times, and... <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty good. All right, you got me there, Cole. No, but the thing is, like, he jokes around, has fun, but it's really, he's a sinister, dangerous man. It's all a rouge, my friend. It's a, it's a big rouge work, I'm telling you. Rouge? Yes, like rouge. the color red in French. The rouge. Yes. No, you know, rouge. 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 R-O-U-S-E. Rouge. Not rouge. Remember the kangaroo sneakers? Uh, I, yeah, believe, I believe you mean R-U-S-E. Right, ruse. As in a ruse. Par la ruse. Par la ruse. Par la ruse. <laughs> Angels, side headlock on Aaron Solo. I like both these guys. Both An these guys, real good athletes. Tremendous athletes, and uh, Angels was uh, obviously among the first five recruits of Dark Order. There was a lot of promise seen in him. And he's, uh, since joining Dark Order, we've really seen his confidence be boosted. Swing and a miss there by five, but Solo just rocked him. Damn. Yeah, Solo, man, looking go. It's not his first rodeo either. Solo is well accomplished. Well nice accomplished, speed. well traveled. Yep. Angels is, uh, you know, I mean, this this is his first taste of the big leagues, Taz, and he's he's really acquitted himself quite well. Oh, oh. Speaking on Angels, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's no doubt, no doubt. He, Alan Angels five. He just keeps his poise about him. I think it's a big plus being part of the dark order for this young athlete. Nice into that Russian leg sweep. That was nice. And that tilt the world attempt. Cover here by Angels. Barely a one count. But I do think though, you know, seriously, like being part of the dark dark order is great for someone like Angels. You know, because of He's on the younger side, and it's, like you said, first taste of the big time. And being with a group that's so dominant like the Dark Order is, is a great thing for him. Yeah, well, we've really seen Reynolds and Silver come out of their shell and become a, you know, a major part of the tag team scene here in AEW. We're getting our first look at Ray Jazz. Yeah, had a nice mat return there, and then had a waist lock. And Into a side headlock. Yeah, I was surprised the way he did that. I believe in working your way towards someone's head and he's grinding down that headlock using a lot of hip. But be careful with someone like 10 because the power of 10, he'll tear you in half. And there we see Taz. 10 brought uh, Jazz up to the to, to his feet by his hair. Yeah, nice uh, go behind right there. Ooh, Ooh. Good elbow. Ooh, Jazz though with an elbow of his own. Yeah, he's a tough, tough athlete. Well, well watch out. Oh, oh, oh. oh man, that was nasty. Big power, we see that. Uh, that spine busted a lot out of 10. The spine placed firmly on the pine by number 10, Preston Vance. 
Ted and I have lots of conversations with friends. A lot of people don't realize we're all good friends. We drink coffee, we talk, uh, oh! We talk stocks, to be honest. Wall Street. Ah, uh, yes. As negative, negative one, the newest, one. Yeah, newest member of Dark Order. He's always watching, he's always around. 10, bringing Ray Jazz back into the ring. And uh, negative one, known as the uh, the equalizer of Dark Order. Yes, weaponry and intensity. Speaking of intensity, look at Colt Cabana. Yeah. Colt Cabana. Not such a nice guy now, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets the high five from five. Toughest substitute teacher looking guy you're ever gonna meet in your life, my friends. Ooh, drop kick to the side of the head. Great tag team cohesion being shown by Dark Order, one of their hallmarks. And I mean, that's that's what also makes them so dangerous, Taz, is that really, you know, any any combination of Dark Order can can prove to be a formidable opponent. Yeah, I think the word you're looking for, and I'll help you with the vocabulary, it's configuration. It's probably a higher end word. And if you grab yourself a thing too, a thesaurus. <laughs> well, listen. We're gonna fix that in, in the edit and post. <laughs> it's gonna come out perfect. Get yourself a thesaurus, Excalibur. Okay? Watch when you hear it back. Uh-huh. Rings <laughs> Ray Jazz I tried over to the bury top. it. I buried myself. <laughs> Not the first time, won't be the last. Yeah, that's right. I'll show you. <laughs> Can I get a team Taz hat, by the way? Yeah, I'm working on that. Okay, I got thanks. my people on it. My embroidery <laughs> shop in uh, Sicily. Yeah, that's what we do our stuff out of, an American too. American. Seems wildly expensive to do that. Money's no object to Team Taz, oh, really. <laughs> oh, Ten hit that big boot on Aaron Solo. Oh, nice. We saw it when Ten was uh, going one-on-one, -on -one Dustin Rhodes, a couple Ooh. weeks ago, he hit, he hit the boot on uh, Solo in the audience. And now meeting of the minds there between five and Ten. Yeah, Fuego dos Souls on fire. Pun oh. intended. Oh. Pun intended. Is that all you could intend the pun? <laughs> Leaps off the back of 10, hits the drop kick on Cabana and Fuego. Ooh. Step up Enzigiri. Looking for this tornado DDT. I think Fuego lost weight from the last time we saw him. <laughs> so now he weighs about 150. Hold on a second. Oh, he's going for that. Yeah, they're right. The big time tornado DDT. Can't get it on anyone. Cazador here by 10. Oh, he's done. Ooh. Little wheelbarrow type suplex right there from Big 10. Ray Jazz sends 10 to the outside, but gets overwhelmed by Angels and Cabana. It was a strong clubbing blow by Pagan uh, Cabana, I should say. And uh, Pagano actually works for yeah, Triple Pagano, A. Yes, well, Triple Mania Jones. I hear you. <laughs> double <laughs> double Irish whip. Oh! oh! Man, 10 launched into that spear. And Fuego del Sol completely isolated here by Dark Order. Good. Beat his ass. I'm sick of this Fuego del Sol. Take his mask off. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Hook kick by Angels. Oh, oh my God. What a combination here by Dark Order. It's done. One, two, three. No winners of this match. Dark Order numbers 10, 5. And Colt Boom Boom Cabana. Negative one looking on. Very pleased with the victory here. Yes. Stoic. By Dark Order. Stoically looking on. And he and Marco Stunt are on a collision course. It's going to happen. Stunt's in grave danger. This is the story of Matt and Nick Jackson, seen through their eyes. Over the past 20 years, they have documented their tireless journey, their triumphs, and their tribulations. And now, they are ready to share their adventures with the world in their new book. One day, let's grow up and let's be professional wrestlers. This is the story of two brothers that became two loving fathers that went on to become the best tag team in professional wrestling today. This is the story of the Young Bucks killing the business. Young Bucks, we're killing the business. 
legit Layla Hirsch in action next here tonight on AEW Dark going one on one with Maddie Renkowski. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring first from Calabasas, California, Maddie Renkowski. Maddie Renkowski making her AEW debut. Calabasas, California, Taz. A right down the road from you. A right. little further up the road. So it's three hours away. Oh, it's no, it's like six in, in traffic. It's oh, terrible. Maybe you want to drive up there and go do some cardio at the gym with Maddie. That's <laughs> how you do with cardio with all the talent. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's there. <laughs> well, I could just do it in my garage. That's an option. <laughs> Save and on gas. her opponent. She's originally from Moscow, Russia. Legit Layla Hirsch. Legit Layla Hirsch making her return here tonight to AEW Dark. Layla, high school wrestling standout in the state of New Jersey. And uh, that folk style wrestling background of Hirsch on full display every time we've seen her test, she uses it to great effect. She sure does. She has excellent balance. She's good explosive quickness on takedowns. You know, the way she inserts, how quick she inserts, go for a high crotch to take someone down or a quick go behind. Let's see. She's got it. You know, you look at Layla, she's not as tall as a lot of the competitors, which is a, there's that. Oh, it's a double, double leg. That's a beautiful double leg right there. To the point, into an attempt of a Juji Katami across Ombre. Immediately takes down Maddie Rankowski. Rankowski, oh. I think. Sorry, again. I realized she was in deep, uh, deep you know what, Tess. Yeah, man. And that's what I was fixing to say. You know, it's like. Maddie's got a big height advantage, as some would think it's an advantage, but it's not when you are not as tall as a wrestler. We saw Hirsch was able to just slip under that that's collar it, and elbow tie-up. She has an advantage. I did that my whole career. When you don't have the height, you use that to an advantage, and I think Layla does that really well, especially I think she'll do that against someone like Maddie here because she's got this height thing going on. Layla doing a little, little bit of hand fighting there, and takes control of that left wrist of Maddie Rinkowski. Yeah, she don't rush into anything. And, oh, Maddie, what she's got in mind, a little roll up, a little kip up. Oh, Layla Hirsch just sits down, looking for that cross arm breaker. Yeah, it's smart by Maddie, what she's doing. She's gripping her own hand with a nest lock, but you, if Layla was able to, okay, it was smart to get the ropes. If she was able to kick that bicep to break that grip and extend that arm, you tear a bicep, you could see that Maddie's in a lot of pain here. Yeah, already, even even with uh, the fact that Layla Hirsch did not have it cinched completely in. Oh, rolls through and comes in, but uh, bypassed there by Layla Hirsch. Oh, nice. Drop kick, though, by Rinkowski. I like that running drop kick. You don't see, you have a, you know, you don't see that much, the run, Excalibur, you know, the deal, the running drop kick with the one foot, that yeah. quickness like that. And when you're taller, like Maddie, it's a little tougher to do a drop kick to someone who's not as tall like Layla. But Rinkowski doing a good job. Those uh, those kicks to the kidneys of Layla Hirsch. But oh, the knee lift to the midsection stops Layla in her tracks. You can see Layla Hirsch just gasping for breath. Yeah, and look at that. Look at the intensity right here by Maddie. The mean, mean young lady bringing it. She knows a win here would do wonders for her career in AEW. Her yeah, a lot of buzz on Layla Hirsch. Oh. Legit Layla Hir Hirsch for sure. I mean, a lot of people. Big fans of hers, and there's a lot, a lot to like in Layla Hirsch. So, to your point, for Maddie, if she gets a win here, it's a big, big victory. She's talking a lot of, yes, lot talk, of trash. Talking a lot of stuff, but so far, backing it up, Taz. Very lackadaisical Ugh. cover there. He took the words out of my mouth. Yeah, you know, I, I think she got a little bit of ahead of uh, ahead of herself, Maddie. She should have went in a little quicker, more aggressively. You have someone with the amateur credentials of Layla and you have them down, you want to zone in for the win. And you can see Layla Hirsch using her hands to pull the grip of, uh, uh, to keep that, that form of Maddie Renkowski off of her off of her throat, and now. Broke her down, kicked her in the front of the quad, broke her down, oh. maybe go for a German. Oh! Yeah. Nicely done. Vaulting off the back into perfect position. One, two, no! Again, you know, when your hips are under your opponent, right, that's a big advantage for a suplex. And Layla just got even deeper underneath Maddie, and that German was excellent. Layla Hirsch charges in. Renkowski counters with the back slide. Finally, one, two, no. Good job by referee Bryce Renberg realizing not to just start counting. He waited for the shoulders to be down. Oh! oh. Just 
Landed. Ah, that's a mistake. Layla Hurst, one, two. Yeah, she could have got a win. I mean, she just all she has to do is just apply a half Nelson to turn Layla instead of pulling her over. That slows down the cover. Yeah, that slows you're, down you're the literally, literally wasting precious seconds yeah. there. Yep. Went for the, the pump kick, but Hirsch. Oh! Nice. And now. Got that arm bar in. Into the cross arm breaker. Extended that Juji Katami is extended. Got a tap. And now yeah. forcing a Renkowski to tap out. Now winner of this match, legit Layla Hirsch. It's not a fancy arm bar. It's been used a lot in MMA and pro wrestling for a lot of years now uh, in the great sport of judo. I mean, it's been used for decades upon decades, and it's it's a phenomenal hold. But Taz, I mean, once you get that locked in, your opponent, uh, it's it's th that flight or f fight yeah. or flight reflex just kicks in. Correct. And there's different things you do with your legs. She decided to go hamstrings across the throat and chest. Uh, back in the day I did it, I put my shin across the head and my other leg across the chest. There's different ways to do it. But as long as you get the bicep Excalibur extended, as you know, that's how you get that tap out win. She got the tap out, she got the victory. Legit Layla Hirsch. We got a big tag team match coming up next. With, well, a bunch of young second generation guys. Terrence and Terrell Hughes collide with the gun club. This is a tag team contest set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring first from New York City, New York, at a combined weight of 425 pounds, Terrence and Terrell Hughes. TNT making the return here to AEW Dark Taz. We've seen them before, very impressive. Chips off the old block. Yeah, absolutely. They, they definitely are. And um, yeah, no, they, they had good outings when we have seen them here on AEW Dog. So let's see how this goes. Very interesting tag team match we're going to witness here, though, I have to say. Four second generation wrestlers. And their opponents from Orlando, Florida, at a combined weight of 420 pounds, Colton and Austin. Good. A very interesting matchup here as two teams of second generation brothers square off inside the AEW ring. Austin Gunn we see right there. Colton Gunn getting up on the opposite turnbuckle. There's Colton prepared to take on Terrence and Terrell Hughes. You see, you see that respect from Billy towards the Hughes boys. I mean, Billy, uh, good friends with their dad, Devon, for a long time. And so respect for all these, all four of these uh, second generation wrestlers. That's all nice, huh? Isn't that nice? It is nice. It tells me that all four of them could never ever be in Team Taz because they're too nice. That's what that tells me. Well, it appears that Terrence Hughes is going to start things off with Colton Gunn. Colton Gunn, very, uh, very excited. Not quite as excited as Austin, but still very excited. Let's see what happens here. Again! Show respect. Now the collar and elbow tie-up. Yeah, strong, uh, strong lock-up by both, both men here. Terrence backing Colton Gunn into the ropes. Colton, shoulder tackle. Yeah, Colton's... You know, got the height like his dad, you know, six, probably six four ish, I would say, right? Probably around six four, six. Lead from, oh, oh nice big. Hip toss, good hip toss. Beautiful hip toss there by Terrence Hughes. Ah, a little uh -oh. lock the gun. I guess we're going to take that respect thing and handshake, throw it out the window. I feel it. Austin Gunn asking to be tagged in. The older brother Colton acquiesces. It's now Terrell Hughes. Seeing his first action of the evening. Austin Gunn taking that side headlock. Terrell Hughes throws him off. Explosive shoulder tackle yeah, there. Yeah, good job by Austin. That was a very strong shoulder block right there. Quick drop down. Nice leapfrog. Whoop. Reversal. Oh, nice fireman carry right there into a roll. Rolls Austin through and then into the crucifix. Just a one count, Austin Gunn though, arm drag. Arm drag returned there by Terrell Hughes. 
That's a deep one. Oh, nice with that headlock. Good job. We've seen Austin do that before. I like that move. Yeah, very good counter there by Austin Gunn. Terrell Hughes, though, doing a good job of getting his feet underneath him, returning to a vertical position. Colton now tagged the back of his brother, so Colton's legal. And we're throwing into the corner by Austin Gunn. Colton sends Austin in once again. And Colton Gunn. Oh! Big diving forearm in the corner. Russian leg sweep. And oh, the flipping neck breaker into the crucifix. But Austin doing his brother a bit of a disservice there, running interference on Aubrey Edwards. Yeah, no, it's true. I just that that those vital one or two seconds can cost you a victory. And I don't think he meant to do that, but it definitely slowed down the cover for sure. No, no, I mean that's that's stuff, Taz, that will come in time. Sure, absolutely. But you know, here on AEW Dark, it's uh, unfortunately you're under the microscope a little bit. Yep. Uh, yeah, definitely. Those type of uh, those type of mental lapses can cost you, as we see right now. TNT capitalizing, hooks the near leg. Well, they are twins, right? So when they switch up, the referee can get a little confused if the ref takes her eye off of the action of that corner, I should say. And these these young guys switch it up. <laughs> you know, you don't know which use brother you got. Yeah, it's Terrence in there, but he tagged out to Terrell. I know it's just the young kids. I, I I never could tell them apart, to be honest with you. <laughs> when they were little or nothing, so. Shoulder to the midsection. Now, belly to belly suplex there by Terrence Hughes. Yeah, nice release, overhead belly to belly throw, and cover now. Hooks the far leg. Well, you know, obviously both of these teams, their dads, over the years have had e immense amount of success in tag team wrestling. And a lot of, lot of history against one another as sure, well. Sure, absolutely. I was there for a lot of that history. So I, I you know, I, yeah. I know it, right? But there's also respect, you know, uh, amongst uh, amongst those teams, those those former teams, mm -hmm. those men, I should say. Look at this here. Oh, the rolling, uh, almost senton, assistant senton. I don't know what you want to call it, but call it effect, no. Austin, nice kick out by Austin. He knows he's got to get his brother here into this match, meaning Austin Gunn, but he's far away from Colton. TNT with all of the momentum here tonight, Taz. Yeah, sure thing. Now both use brothers, TNT, all over Austin. What are they going to do here? Double whip. Terrence, oh, nice. Terrence charges in. Terrell gets reversed into his brother, meaning on mine's there. Yeah, you don't see that uh, Terrence and Terrell have a little hiccup, and they did right there. Austin Gunn made the tag out to Colton. Colton, big clothesline, second one. Sends Terrence out to the floor. Terrell, wild swing and a miss. Oh, great elevation on that drop kick. Sure thing. Hooks the far leg, no! Well, smart what Colton did, even though he doesn't have a lot of experience, he saw that there was going to be interference on the cover, but he kept on the cover. Even though he didn't get the win, it was smart by him to yeah, do the, that. Yeah, there's always a chance the guy on the outside is a, a second anything. too right. late, yeah. yeah. Colton slides underneath the bottom rope, catches the clothesline attempt, boot to the midsection. Double underhooks. Double underhook, the Colt 45. One, two, three. The uh, winners of this match, the team of Colton and Austin. Good. A well, good tag team matchup, good tag team action by all four young athletes. Show respect right there from the Gun Club. Great display. Tag team wrestling by all four of these second generation men. And that double underhooks into that Colt 45. Yeah, that, that neck breaker, that corkscrew neck breaker. Ended the night for TNT. Oh, isn't that such a happy picture? Look at that. Everybody's happy. Right? Isn't that nice? Gun Club Victoria's here tonight on AEW Dark. All right, guys, here we go. I can't wait to see it. Whoa. Que yo bendiga la botella. Oh my gosh, Chris, you've completely outdone yourself. But dead ass, yo, how is this even possible? I mean, look at the craftsmanship. It's so beautiful. Look how it turned out. It's absolutely exquisite. Drink what the Demo God drinks.
A little bit of the bubbly is back, baby! Supplies are limited. Go to littlebitofthebubbly.com and order now. Get it before it's gone, because last year sold out. Viva el vino brioso! Yay! Ay, ay, ay. Danny Limelight has been impressive in his previous outings here on Dark, but he will have a real test ahead of him against Death Triangle's Ray Phoenix next here tonight. This bout is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Brooklyn, New York, weighing 174 pounds, Danny Limelight. How, I mean, listen, there's not, there's not enough adjectives in my opinion to speak so highly about someone like Danny Limelight. This guy has everything there is to be a, a star, in my opinion. I mean, we, saw, we saw him push Brian Cage a couple weeks ago. In uh, uncomfortable territory. We'll talk more about that in a minute, though. And his opponent from Mexico City, Mexico, weighing 175 pounds. Some match, my man. This is going to be some kind of match. And what about the match at New Year's Smash? Night one, December 30th, special edition of AEW Dynamite. Kenny Omega goes one on one with Ray Phoenix in the AEW World Championship title. Will be on the line. Big time right there. Big time. Sink our teeth into this right now. I'm telling you, this is, I think this is going to be a really, really good matchup. Dude, you can't disagree with that. No, not at all. I, this, I, I'm the highly anticipated. Perhaps the people's main event here tonight. Swing and a miss there by Ray Phoenix. Danny Limelight grabs the waist lock. Phoenix trying to back Limelight into the ropes. Drop kick. Phoenix held on. Limelight put on the brakes. Oh, shoulder Ooh. tackle, though. And nice he, intensity on that shoulder block. And if you remember, Ray Phoenix versus Kenny Omega was the match that was supposed to take place in the second round of the AEW World Title Eliminator Tournament. Injury to uh, Phoenix. Oh, roll up here. Limelight, ooh, very nearly picked up a huge upset. Yeah, that, sometimes that could happen. You know, as you know, in a, quickly in a matchup like this. Limelight sweeps out the legs, steps through, looking for perhaps a sharpshooter. But yeah, if he's just, just got to step over and he'll have it. Sharpshooter, Scorpion, Deathlock, whatever you want to call it. Same hold. But able to get out was Phoenix. Phoenix, good escape. And, uh, you know, Omega and Don Callis last week on Dynamite, they said, uh, you know, the, the the doubters have been proved wrong that by, by Omega putting away Joey Janela, all the questions were, uh, were put to bed after that World Title Eliminator Tournament. But Omega never faced Phoenix in the tournament. He faced Penta. Faced a banged up Penta. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's a, a, an awesome point. There's no doubt, and that's hey, uh, you're the world champ. You're Kenny Omega. You, you, <laughs> you're the man. Let's do it. Let's oh. see it. Roll up here. Limelight throws the boot. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Roll up. Phoenix only gets a one count there from referee Aubrey Edwards. Both double clothesline, double forearms. Oh, wow! Oh. Drop it. Good gosh! Great extension there by Ray Phoenix. Amazing. Tremendous. Drops I have no idea what he just said. But it's an animo. This is a personal catchphrase. Means you know, like like spirit or okay. eternal spirit. force. Animo. Yeah. Animo. Yeah. Animal. Animal. Oh, he's uh, looking for the package. Pile yes, driver. Shout out to his uh, his older brother, his Penta brother. El Cerro Miedo. Watch out at Limelight. What a just spinning it to that hot, that round kick to the head. But Ray Phoenix a step quicker and the hook kick drops Limelight. Great job by Phoenix. Probably have to change the name of that kick, but that's a different story. Oh, oh man. Speaking of kicks. That was a dirty kick, Taz. Like, yeah, that's Ray Phoenix just brings the wood, man. He is just so intense. That's just, just fire, man. He just really is. That first night of New Year's Smash, December 30th. It's a two-week event. January 6th will be the second night. Special guest Snoop Dogg joining us on AEW Dynamite. Yeah, can't wait for that. It's going to be awesome. Snoop in the house. 
Not to mention tomorrow night on TNT, Ooh. 10 p.m., or immediately following the NBA action. It is holiday bash as Danny Limelight here goes for the cover. Special start time tomorrow night on TNT. Danny Limelight now stalking. Got Phoenix down and hurting. Ooh! Really stepped into that kick. A second one just strong, strong. Can you hear it echoing off the chest of Phoenix? Hanging neckbreaker there. Cover here by Limelight. Did not neutralize the, the arms or the legs, just went for the lateral press, and Phoenix sending a bit of a message on that kick out. Yeah, and sometimes, as you know, that you can do that on the kick out. When it's, you kick out emphatically with a lot of power, it shows you know, your opponent, wow, I don't have as much on this guy as I thought. Phoenix gets the boot up in the corner, kicks Limelight out back towards oh. center, and the thrust kick. She had extension in the leg, flexibility. Oh, oh, oh man. Unbelievable. Ray Phoenix, just special kind of athlete. Just chopping down Danny Limelight. What the hell is he doing, man? He's got the legs of Limelight. Oh, oh man. The snap his ankle. This is a. Well, it's illegal. He's in the ropes, but still. The, oh, and the leg drop. This is a mean streak from, from Ray Phoenix that we're not used to seeing. Cover here. One, two. Sometimes you could, and you know this, you could use a, an illegal hold in the ropes to bend the guy up just for the five count, I mean, you know, to Jerry. As many know, back in the day, they did the tarantula. I've been in that thing, it hurts like hell, and you only keep it off for five count, but that's enough to put pressure on someone. Danny Limelight. Limelight off the back of Phoenix, stomp to the back of the head on the way down, Taz. What kind of balance does Danny have? One, two, no! I was gonna say he has uh, almost Ray Phoenix-esque balance. Yeah, and that's no lie, I mean. These guys physically similarities for sure. Knee to the head. Yeah, driving knee strike. Phoenix preventing the the brain buster. Fist fight right now. You might not want to have a fist fight with Danny Limelight. Come on, Danny. He's a Brooklyn guy. Tough kid. Oh, but, oh, oh what a man. A knee. The knee to Phoenix very nearly knocking him out of the ring. And now Danny Limelight. And Limelight and whoa, Phoenix whoa, whoa. fighting on the on the middle rope. It's tough to get for either athlete to get balance, as you can see, but they're trying. But you saw that Phoenix did have the better balance of the two men. Look at this, man. Only on dock you're going to see stuff like this. Is sick. Big, Great stuff. Big knee strike from Limelight, who now comes off the top. Go ahead, no. Danny. Go ahead. Oh! Oh! No! Man, oh, man. Tremendous anti-air from Ray Phoenix, Danny Limelight. It just took too long for Danny on those ropes. Oh, Ooh, man. That rolling soul, but off the middle rope, Danny Limelight's night could be coming oh, to an end. Oh, no, Muscle Buster Jones here. Spins him out, plants him. One, two, three. Oh, winner of this match, Ray Phoenix. Well, we kind of called it. We don't have to be a couple of Einsteins to realize that was going to be a hell of a match. It sure was. A tremendous match, and you saw Ray Phoenix wrestling with purpose. He is 100% prepared for December 30th and his world title shot against Kenny Omega. Man, if you are Kenny, you really need to get your head on right when you deal with someone like Phoenix. To your point, Phoenix seems locked and loaded for that opportunity at the AEW World Championship. Sign of respect by both men here. Good show of respect, and we could have just seen a victory by the next AEW World Champion. Holidays for New Year Smash, December 30th. Tune in to find out. Next up in our main event, Serpentica, one half of Chaos Project goes one on one with the shamanic Matt Seidel. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied to the ring by Luther from San Juan, Puerto Rico, weighing 175 pounds, Serpentico. 
Serpentico in a rare singles appearance here since teaming up with Dr. Luther as part of Chaos Project. Well, I guess he was he was disbarred. He lost his, uh, his license to practice medicine. So Did that happen? Luther now. Yeah. That could happen. And here we go. One, two, three, and boom! Love that. Crazy lighting treatment going on. Go inside term for you. Production term. Thanks, Ted. those production fans out there. Hey, I'm still learning, man. All right. I take every every opportunity to learn. Oh, yeah, big baby face. Here we go. And his opponent from this side dojo in Clearwater, Florida, weighing 166 pounds, Matt Seidel. It's the battle of the third eyes. Kind of. Kind of. With Luther's not in the match. They're both obsessed with their third eye. See, he's, Luther's got the third eye. He's well, like, no, my, he's my third a, eye is bigger. He was pointing at his temple, not necessarily his third eye. Luther gets confused. You know how he is. Seidel's yeah. not confused. Could it be that Luther's third eye moves around? It definitely moves around. It changes colors. It's like a mood ring. Remember the mood rings? I remember mood rings. Sir Pentagon's like, yours Look, was, he's yours got a third was always eye. red. No, it was orange. What's well, red mean? Me? Uh, angry. Yeah, that's yeah, true. It was orange, too. Meaner than on red. Something like that was really bad. You know, some people can say that orange is a version of red. Well, it's in the. I mean, it's, yeah, a, it's I mean, a version of red with some yellow in it. It's some yellow in it, yeah. I mean, yeah, we're going to go over the color. Serpentico trying to make a quick start to this. Obviously, you know, Serpentico definitely has an advantage because Luther's out there. And you got to realize Seidel, being a veteran, he understands. He's got to be careful. So it's about the third eye. See? Oh. See? <laughs> Luther's just wild, man. He grabbed himself a single hit. Did Serpentico not there? Headlock takedown. Nicely done by Seidel. And there we go. Now, arm, he's got control of that wrist, that two on one. Oh, those are going for a Russian leg sweep. Whoa! Nice takedown by. Side down, Serpentico smart, get himself to the corner, Excalibur. Taz, I lower down. Yeah, I mentioned that uh, Serpentico usually is part of a tag team in Chaos Project. Speaking of tag teams, look at that transition. Nice. We've got a lot of great tag team action coming up tomorrow night in the Holiday Bash edition of AEW Dynamite. The World Tag Team Championships will be on the line as the Young Bucks defend against the acclaimed. And oh, Seidel here with a crucifix roll up. Serpentico able to break free. Not only that, top flight, well, Darius and Dante Martin will be taking on the inner circle team of Chris Jericho and MJF. All of that and so much more tomorrow night at well, 10 p.m. Taz, I'm trying to finish this I promo. I know you are, but I wanted to say something about the acclaimed. We've seen them acclaim a lot here on AEW Dark, an eight-match winning streak. They've been tearing it up. So, yes, I just wanted to say that. Speaking, you were speaking. I'm sorry. That is... <laughs> All of that and more tomorrow night at 10 p.m. or immediately following the NBA on TNT AEW Dynamite Holiday Bash Edition. It's Matt Seidel maintaining control of that arm, that left arm of Serpentico, but Serpentico makes it over to the bottom rope to force the break. Well, you know, you see, in a circle, Chris Jericho, we saw on the 30th anniversary of Jericho, we saw him compete against Serpentico and Luther. Wait, oh, watch cover. out here. Deep cover here. And that long history of Luther and Jericho. Hold on, look at this nice submission right here by Matt Seidel. The arms of Serpentico are captured. Seidel cranking on the neck, but Serpentico counters into a pinning predicament. Oh, look at that round kick right to the side of the leg. Beautiful by Seidel. Matt Seidel kicks out the leg of Serpentico. Standing, lands on his feet there. And, oh, the oh, nice. drop kick. Well, Serpentico was going towards the side of where the corner was. Oh, and you, wow, so, Seidel. Oh, he got caught up in the ropes. That's rare you see that happen. Especially someone like Seidel. How do you like that, you little head <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh. I've seen this before. Oh! oh. Just throw. I think Serpentico <laughs> landed on his head by his own partner. It's weird. Yeah, it's but such an unorthodox weird. offense from Chaos Project oh. here. So on that mean streak right there, Serpentico driving his shin bone right into the face of Matt Seidel. Serpentico returns Seidel to the ring. 
So Seidel's in trouble here. Definitely in trouble. Big right hand between the eyes of Matt Seidel. Serpentico, oh, no, reversed into the corner. Escapes out, nobody home there. Ooh. High kick drops Matt Seidel. Uh, uh, Serpentico. Oh, the double stomp. And he stuck the landing for good measure. Right on the, just the middle of the sternum area and under the chest bone. Uh-oh. Covers. You have to look at that as an upset, in my opinion. Just to the point we've seen Serpentico with Luther as a full-fledged tag team, you know what I mean? Like, to get a win over someone like Seidel is definitely going to be, if he can do it, an upset. Yeah, Seidel has been on an incredible roll here in the singles competition. But to, with that in mind, Chaos Project has been on a roll of their own in tag team action. And now look at this, Luther once again interjecting himself into this matchup. Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. You know, that's the, the definitely an advantage for, for Serpentico because, you know, Luther's on the outside there causing massive distractions. Serpentico sending Seidel face first into that top turnbuckle pad. Two times in a row. And a third time. No block by Seidel. Seidel gets the, the kick, drops Serpentico, or not Ooh. drops, drives him back towards center, but hits the leg lariat. Well, that little adjustment of the head mask area that, that we've seen Serpentico do a lot was enough of a delay to get Seidel back on track, maybe, here. Matt Seidel with a moment to recover. Can he capitalize on it? Looks to be. Kicks to the, the legs, the midsection, the rolling soul, but pushes Serpentico back towards the corner. Seidel hooks Just that inside hook right there. Oh! Brain Buster hooks the far leg. One, two, th oh no! Serpentico able to kick out. Yeah, nice job by Serpentico. Showing a lot of heart. A lot of heart right there to kick out. Landed on the back of his head. Matt Seidel, oh no, Serpentico escapes. Off from underneath, Fireman's carry. Seidel though, it's the slice. Drive Serpentico down, one, two, no. Again, Serpentico able to kick out. Yeah, I thought that Seidel was gonna get the win right there, but uh-uh, it didn't happen. It's that standing body press. The Mari, the yeah, that Mari Posa with that late, late twist went for the roundhouse. Nope, Serpentico though rolls him up. Oh, low angle DDT. Love that. Great job. Serpentico floats over one, two. No, Seidel explodes upward, kicking out. You don't see many uh, men or women do that short DDT like that, man. That's uh oh. Go up. Go up. Go up. Such synergy amongst the you know, chaos problems. You know, if, if, <laughs> if Arn Anderson coached Cody Rhodes like that, Cody might still be TNT champion. That's a great chance of that. That's true. Serpentico headed up to the top rope after the, the coaching there on the outside by Luther. Diving foot stomp. Seidel able to avoid it. Oh, oh God. Good night, Gracie. No, oh, again, Serpentico kicks out. That snapping side slam on the back of the head. He deliberately drives you, does Seidel, on the back of your head with that vicious move. I don't know how the hell Serpentico kicked out. Shot a half Nelson there. What's he going to do? Nothing. He's getting back elbow. elbow. Yeah, yeah, trying to fight his way free of the grip of Matt Seidel. Matt Seidel, though. Russian leg sweep with the arm captured. Now, got himself a, a good... Grip right to kind of a version of an S grip. Looks like you don't have it fully S grip, but he's got that arm across the throat. And and Serpentico doing a good job of getting his feet out from under him to get back up to a vertical base and get to the ropes to force the break. And goes over the slice bread number two. He's got One, it. He's got two, it. no! Wow, Serpentico very nearly stole one, Taz. High stacking, hot, definitely almost stole one, but that pin, that stack pin was beautifully done. Seidel, man, showing what he's made of kicking out palm strikes and then a forearm shiver. Serpentico. Oh, nice. gets rolled up. One, two, no. Seidel trying to make a quick end Ooh. to this, but that knee strike might have opened the window of opportunity. Oh. The roundhouse, and now Seidel. Oh, man. Plants him. One, two, three. The winner of this match, Matt. Seidel. I mean, talk about an excellent matchup by Seidel and Serpentico. Seidel gets the win, and man, everything Seidel does, the snap, the crispness of all of his offense, 
to this point right there is just, that's why he's been so successful here in AEW. Dominant win right there. Matt Seidel continues the momentum here tonight. Taz, what a great way to cap off AEW Dark. Tomorrow night, AEW Holiday Bash edition of Dynamite at 10 p.m. or immediately following the NBA action on TNT. Well, thank you for joining us here tonight on AEW Dark. Tomorrow night, the Holiday Bash edition of AEW Dynamite at 10 p.m. or immediately following the NBA action on TNT. We will see the AEW World Tag Team Championship on the line as the champions, the Young Bucks, defend against Max Caster and Anthony Bowens, the acclaimed. Not only that, the Inner Circle's Chris Jericho and MJF will team up to take on Darius and Dante Martin, top flight, in a match that was made before our eyes tonight. Alex Gracia will have a huge opportunity as she takes on AEW Women's World Champion Hikaru Shida. The natural Dustin Rhodes goes one-on-one -on -one with Evil Uno of the Dark Order. And all three members of Jurassic Express Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, and Marco Stunt will face Colt Cabana, number five and number 10 of the Dark Order. And a lot of bad blood in this one. The Bastard Pack takes on the Butcher. All of that and so much more tomorrow night, 10 p.m. or immediately following NBA action on TNT, AEW Dynamite Special Edition Holiday Bash for myself, Excalibur, for Taz, for Justin Roberts, for Stevie, the stage manager, for everybody back in the truck. Good night, everyone!